Well, we're getting, we're getting close to wrap it up, and I want to talk about your sister. She is music supervisor on what I know on Pulp Fiction in Reservoir Dogs. She's working on some projects now that are huge that I don't know if I'm allowed to say or not. Well, with Tarantino, since Tarantino is such, like he says when he writes these she things. She really, he, with, Res- with Reservoir Dogs, I mean, you look at Pulp Fiction, and Karen's name is like the third credit that mm-hmm. comes up. And, uh, you know, I spent many, many years not talking to my sister. Many years. And now we're actually working together on a project and I, I talk to my sister all the time. But I believe, you know, that like, you know, she made the Pulp Fiction soundtrack, which influenced so much stuff. That's awesome, though. When I saw it on here. Because there were so I... many. Ra- I mean, there were certain songs that Quentin said, hey, what about this song? And then she'd go get the licensing for it. But there are certain songs that that were just like random songs, you know. You know, stuck in the middle with you is pretty good, but you know, Dick Dale and and uh, I don't remember all the the other song, Girl would be a woman soon. Yeah, I mean, yeah. all these songs that to show were you never put in tell. the soundtracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's some. I mean, you know, now I think we know how important music is to TV and soundtracks. You know, I just I just finished watching Peaky Blinders. Yes, oh, dude. And, good. Oh, and my and God, because dude. of Peaky Blinders, I got into the band The Idols. Yeah. And I started listening to Idols just because they played them so much in Peaky Blinders. Do you have a favorite Tarantino film? Interestingly enough, the first time I saw Pulp Fiction, I didn't like it at all. Really? Yeah. Times have changed. I really like Pulp Fiction. Me too. That's my favorite. I really like Pulp Fiction because there's few movies out there that it's just classic moment after isn't like a there isn't a filler like oh this is leading up to this scene it's like everything I mean it's like every single scene is a highlight in Pulp Fiction you know everything I mean you think about just just everything like there's something so unbelievable about Pulp Fiction but there's also things because every personality is so completely unique from one another that it's almost believable like to me, if I'm going to watch a TV show or movie, what I need is characters. I need yeah. characters. Like, you know, we watch some, like we started watching Tulsa King with Sylvester Stallone. But there's just too many things in the starting that's unbelievable. You know, even in my fantasy, because I love comic books and I love horror, I need some believability in the most ridiculous, you know, things. Yeah. Like, you know, like the most poignant, I've never used that word before, film. The most important film that everybody needs to watch that people don't realize is exactly what we are becoming is... Idiocracy. No. Wally. Oh, yes. 100% agree people with that. People do not understand how damn accurate that film is. And people write off Pixar, write off the... Dis- I never do. I love those movies. No, they nailed but it. But Wally Big, fat, is lazy. exactly how we are becoming. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. In movies in general, because everybody talks to you about music, if you had somebody held you down and say, top three, top five, what are your go-to classic movies? Okay. Now, I already told you one off camera, and I have to say something about it when I say it. I think the greatest movie ever made was Jaws. And the reason that I say that is Jaws absolutely changed everybody's life to me oh, being yeah. a kid and being 100%. scared shitless to be in a swimming pool. But I love Jaws, but I also don't like what that movie did to sharks because sharks are not vicious killers that are looking for humans. You know, if they eat a human sometimes it's by accident. Um, so Jaws would be one. I really loved Swingers when it came out. Oh, I loved me? Swingers, <laughs> which I showed Leah Swingers, and she was like, "It's okay." And I'm like, oh, "You know, I think that really is might be a guy's movie." The Answer Machine is the one of the best. So painful, <laughs> so painful <laughs> to watch, and so damn accurate. So painful. It's which I just learned. Telling, telling thank the, God. Telling the girls, sorry, telling the girls that they just picked up all about his ex-girlfriend at, in, their, in the camper trying to get laid. Vince Vaughn's trying to get laid. He's telling her about his ex-girlfriend. And a scene movie. with a, that was just so, and talking about your ex-girlfriend and, and the truth about Vegas, because Vegas has always been thought like, you go to Vegas, you're going to get laid. There's so many girls. You go in this like, yeah, this really is. And even when the Hard Rock was at its peak, it was all old people at the Hard Rock too. Oh yeah, I, that's where I used to stay. Was at the Hard Rock. I just, I, I like you. I just like, I just love that. 
that lifestyle, that that look, that that uh, that grit of, uh, of 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 Vegas, you know. Old Old Vegas was fantastic. We used to play at a club right beside the Palms called Pinks or Pinkies. I can't remember what the name of it was exactly, but you could get up in the morning, stay at a hotel for twenty bucks, get up in the morning, eat a buffet for three dollars, and and the cowboy guy was on Fremont doing mm-hmm. his thing. Everybody, people, it, now it's like last time I went, it was like. Disneyland. You couldn't even touch a buffet for less than fifty. No, 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 no. <laughs> Downtown Vegas is the ticket. If there was gonna be a cat house bar opening, probably it would be down there. There has been discussions. Um, nothing's broken ground, but my friend is opening up a hotel casino, and they could use a they could use and a they club. could use a bar. Like if the cat house ever opens up, it'd be a bar. It'd be a bar that plays great music. It wouldn't be a live venue. I have no desire to do a live venue. There's some live venues that open up in LA and it was like, hey, you're going to do it. I don't want to open up a live venue. You know, the reason that I opened up a rock and roll dance club is I wanted people to go there and then go to the next week and then go next week. And then when you have a band playing and it's really great, everybody's like, great. Hey, you want to go to the Cat House? Who's playing? Oh, oh, nobody's playing. Just Nah. You know, when the Cat House was supposed to be dance club, so it'd be crowded every single week. And then damn Guns N' Roses had to play the Cat House and then it all went to hell.